if you're creating anything regarding rigid body dynamics or any type of dynamics what you need to understand is how constraint works because that will just help you creating those rigid body dynamics simulation even better so similar to n cloth rigid body dynamics has its own constraint which is a legacy constraint and we'll see how that works so the first thing i want to do is switch my menu to fx and if you go to fields and solver this is the legacy constraint and in in constraint we have the constraints for the end cloth so we have already covered everything regarding end cloth and end constraints so we'll see how rigid boy dynamics works with constraints so let's start i'm going to take a simple sphere and um, yeah so if i go to my fields and solver you'll notice we have a couple of constraints five constraints and then we have active and rigid body and passive and rigid body to create our passive collider and active rigid body so the one thing interesting about constraint is that you don't actually have to create an active rigid body if you are using constraint like for example the first constraint that we have is the nail constraint if i click on my nail constraint uh nothing much happens but if i make my sphere a hollow object or a wireframe you'll see some cross right about there and that is our overall constraint and if i pull this out this is our nail constraint so right now you have this guide over here which represents our constraint and one thing you'll notice if i click on my sphere you already get the whole rigid body dynamics here so you don't actually have to create an active rigid body and then apply constraint if you apply constraint the object automatically becomes a rigid body so if i play this nothing happens because a rigid body dynamics doesn't work without any fields so we have to take a field so i'm going to take a gravity now if i play this nothing happens but let's say if i make this somewhere about right about here and if i play this now you'll notice that our sphere is moving so this is as the name suggests uh, the nail constraint is basically a nail attached in the wall and this is your overall thread or whatever you want to call it so this is pulling the overall sphere here so if i play this you'll notice this is animating now so you can create some kind of pendulum and kind of sort of things like that so you can move anywhere your constraint that you want and you can play this and it will react automatically so this is what nail constraint does and um, you can do pretty amazing stuff with this if you go to the overall nail constraint options here and you'll have this couple of options like set initial position which means the starting position by default it always creates a constraint in the middle of the geometry but if you want you can change that by simply moving your overall xyz position and uh, here you can see we have spring attributes and it's completely grayed out and the reason it's grayed out because we don't have the nail uh, spring constraint we have the nail constraint but if i select my spring constraint you can see we have this option so there is nothing much in the whole setting areas in the overall parameter but you can control the overall uh, nail constraint from here as well so you can also change your overall constraints from constraint type as well so this is a nail constraint and uh, you can pretty much combine this with other stuff as well like for example if you have i'm gonna create a simple plane here and let's turn off the grid so i'm gonna duplicate this a couple of times and i'm gonna make this as a passive collider and i'm gonna select all of these and um, yeah let's make this active rigid body so if i play this now nothing happens because the gravity has only been applied to our overall um sphere here so i'm gonna select these as well and i'm gonna say gravity so let's play this now and here you can see this is what you get obviously there are some errors and collision because we have our nail constraint over there as well and so that's why we get some kind of different distorted look and yeah so there you go so this is how you can combine it in the further videos we'll see how we can use this to create this kind of block hitting areas but you get the idea so i'm gonna move on from here i'm gonna take another sphere okay so the next thing that we have is the pin constraint so i'm gonna select my sphere and i'm gonna apply pin constraint and i'm gonna make sure i've reset in my settings and hit create so if i make uh, my sphere wireframe you won't see much happening here right about there 
Uh, but let's say if I create another sphere, I'm going to control D this and select both of these and I'm going to hit pin constraint. So you'll see this guideline between them. And if I hit play, nothing happens. I'm going to select these spheres and I'm going to take a gravity. Now if I play this now, this instantly falls. But let's say I don't want the gravity in both of the spheres. I can only select one sphere and I'm going to say gravity. So now these two are attached with a pin constraint. The and how this reacts is the only one geometry that is that the gravity has been applied is kind of pulling the other sphere as well. So you can see here and we get this in the pivot point for the overall nail constraint which we can pretty much change and this is how it's going to react. So you can also take a simple plane as a passive collider if you want and that way you'll get a ground. So now as you can see this sphere is holding this sphere although there are there is no kind of gravity applied to this sphere and it's completely holding this sphere by a simple nail constraint. So you can change this to kind of change the overall dynamics here of how this is kind of reacting. So as you can see this sphere is floating on the air because there is no gravity to pull it down. So it will kind of float in the air unless and until the gravity has been applied. So we can use our nail constraint to pretty much create that type of dynamics if you want. So this is exactly holding it out. So this is what you have. Pretty amazing. Let's move on. I'm going to take another sphere. And there's one more thing that you need to know regarding the pin constraint. So if you go to the overall settings here, you'll get something called as a interpenetrate option and the second thing is set initial position which we already know it sets the initial position but the inner penetrate it, it kind of uh, creates a multiple object like a multiple uh, how do I say this constraints for more than one object or max max two it can't be applied to more than two I think but if I create uh, like for example I'm gonna turn this off and I'm gonna select this I'm gonna hit create nothing happens but if I select this one and hit create you get this constraint here and if i take another sphere and i'm going to hit five let's keep it to wireframe and i'm going to go to my pin constraint in a penetrate and i'm going to hit create nothing happens but let's say if i take something like control d and if i go to my pin constraint and I'm going to keep this on in a penetrate and I'm going to hit create nothing happens but if I remove one sphere and hit create it activates instantly so pin constraint can only work with two objects and right now we don't have any gra gravity for these objects so I'm going to select these let's keep one out and let's hit gravity so if I play this now this falls so there's that so mostly constraint doesn't work with multiple objects but pin constraint does all right so let's move on i'm going to create another sphere and i'm going to scale this up and let's go to fields and solver and i'm going to create hinge so i play this nothing happens obviously and if i hit wireframe you'll see there is a hinge right about here a kind of a you can say a leverage here and if i pull this out the hinge out I'm gonna play this nothing happens I'm gonna select and create a gravity from here so it has kind of created a hinge here and this works as a pendulum now so from here what I can do is I can take another sphere and I'm gonna scale this up and let's create another hinge for this to right about there I'm gonna select this and add a bit of a gravity here as well and I'm going to keep that one like that. So here, as you can see, the two rigid bodies are colliding with the hinge constraint attached. So this is how you can create that pendulum effect. So this is how the overall constraint works. Pretty easy to use, pretty straightforward. Let's move on. And uh, the next one that we have is the spring. All right, so spring is basically, as the name suggests, spring is basically a spring. So I'm going to select uh, my sphere here and create a gravity. I'm going to play this and here as you can see the spring has been attached on the overall position here and it's acting as a sphere. So this is kind of a, like a ping pong ball where it's kind of reacting towards the spring. So what you can else you can do is you can pull out your spring constraint here and this will 
pull the overall sphere in that direction. Now regarding the overall constraint here, you get a couple of options here with the overall spring constraint and the couple of things that you need to keep in mind is obviously the spring constraint and I believe the damping and the rest length. So spring uh, stiffness is kind of how hard or slow it is, how much strength it has on the overall uh, dynamics here. So if I make this something like a one and if I play this again, you can see it has a pretty less strength towards the overall sphere because it's now it's working as if the sphere has more mass in it, although it doesn't. But since we have removed the overall strength here, you can see how much stiffness it has. But if I increase this to something like a 10 here, you'll see how much strong the overall spring is pulling that sphere. So this is how the overall spring constraint works. So I'm going to keep it one. Now damping is basically how much slower or you can see the effect of spring is going to fade away as it goes into the overall time. For example, right now what we have is 0.1 as a damping. Now if I increase this, this will just increase the amount of which how much the overall dynamic effect fades away. So Right now, if I make this something like a 0.5, let's notice how this works first. All right, I'm gonna make the stiffness to five again. Okay, so this is what you have. I'm gonna make this something like a 0.2. And let's see again. All right, so not a lot of difference, uh, but I can do one thing. I'm gonna select this guy and I'm gonna make this 0.5 and uh, slowly you'll notice how much the spring reaction uh, how much slower it's kind of slowing down as it goes in deeper and deeper time so i can make this something like a two and from here you can see how much sooner it's stopping right now so it's stopping much sooner because the overall effect of elasticity is kind of slowing down with the time but if i make this something like 0.1 this will just keep going and going and going so you can see how much strength it has the overall dynamic effect and then we have the rest length and rest length determines how much sooner it's going to get into the rest position like for example when the overall effect is done and the sphere is just lying there so this determines how much sooner it's going to get to that rest position so don't be confused with the damping and rest length so i'm gonna get a value of one and this is what we have. i'm gonna increase the value so from here you can see the overall effect like that because the overall rest length i'm going to increase the damping a bit to contribute towards the rest length so we can slow down the overall spring effect here and now you can get that kind of effect i'm going to increase the stiffness so let's make 20 all right so now you can see the overall although we have a bit of more stiffness here but still we can see a bit more slowing down simulation here i'm gonna make this point one here and you can see the overall damping has been set to point one and the stiffness is too much too high and so you can see how much stronger the overall effect is and the rest length has been set to a 10. So that's why you get more pulling kind of effect. It's kind to get into the overall rest position here. And since we have a very drastic amount of spring uh, amount, you can get this kind of effect. So you can keep increasing this until you are happy with the overall results. So I'm gonna make this something like one and one, and I'm gonna make this five again. So here you can get this kind of look, a slowing down animation, a much more subtle effect. So don't go too drastic with the overall amount here. So you can do pretty amazing stuff with the overall spring constraint here. Wherever you are going to put the overall constraint, it's going to pull towards that. So you can create a kind of a catapult, a catapult effect where you are throwing a stone or anything, pretty much angry bird kind of thing. So you can create that with the overall spring constraint here. And I'm going to delete this. Let's move on. I'm going to take another sphere and let's go to field and solver and I'm going to select barrier. So the barrier is, um, as the name suggests, it's a barrier. So here you can get this kind of rectangle or square, sorry. And the square is basically our barrier. It 
cannot pass this barrier over i mean it can pass but it cannot pass this square so this is acting as a barrier here so it will kind of collide with the overall barrier and it will move the overall sphere on its way so i'm going to take my gravity and from here as you can see this is how it's reacting not too interesting but if i make this something like a bit more tilted let's play this now now you can see how the barrier is reacting so the overall ball or you can say our overall sphere is bouncing on the overall barrier here and kind of going on the direction on the falling direction because of the overall gravity here so it totally depends where your barrier is so i'm gonna scale this up and let's remove the grid here and from here if i play this now you can see it's always a line with the overall barrier here so this is kind of a wall in a way that you have created a simple wall with the overall cube here so the barrier is going to act like a simple barrier you, your geometry or your rigid void dynamics cannot surpass that so this is the effect that you get with that so you can use your barrier to create a kind of a barrier wherever you want in a way where your rigid body shouldn't go so you can create that kind of stuff with this uh, so that was it that was a pretty small breakdown with the overall constraint this was just a quick breakdown of the overall constraint here a very small explanation and if you don't understand anything don't worry about it because sooner we are going to be creating multiple stuff with the overall constraint so slowly you'll get the overall idea how to use this constraint in uh, your project or whatever type of thing you're designing so yeah so don't worry about the constraint if you don't understand a thing we will slowly cover everything in a detailed way where we create abstract stuff with this where we use this constraint to create some amazing stuff and we'll see how we can create some destruction and so on with the overall widget boy dynamics as we go on so that's it for this one and i'll see you in the next video